So we've been in the squirrel's nest for a few months now, and one thing we've definitely come to notice is that the lighting is not the best. So we decided to upgrade it, and I've got a few reasons why that I think you guys might get something from. So first and foremost, the reason we decided to upgrade our lighting is because it's insanely inconsistent. You gotta remember, we shoot videos and photos here. For instance, standing in this back corner is incredibly dark. One of the lights is out, and we have fluorescent tubes throughout the entire shop. Now, a lot of people like fluorescent tubes. We personally don't. Sam's a photographer, and because of that, he is very adept and trained to see the differences in what's going on. So right now, for our shop to not look terrible, the ISO is over 4,000, and this corner is insanely dark. But let's flip it around. Oh, now it's really bright. And now it's super bright. And so when we're filming and moving around the shop, it makes for an issue. So one, we wanna get more consistent lighting in the shop. So if you're making videos and you want them to be a little bit better, what you wanna do is eliminate those hot spots or those really bright spots. It has twice the light that it did in that other corner. So we wanna eliminate that. And we're super stoked because we're working with American Green Lights and they provide a heat map when you give them your shop and it'll tell you where things are going to be laid out and kind of helps you understand how to light your shop properly. The second reason we wanna upgrade our lighting is because fluorescent tubes aren't as good at providing a bright enough light to show defects in your work. There's two things we do here. We make videos and we make projects. So in our last shop, I talked about having proper lighting because you can see your projects better and therefore eliminate any swirl marks or defects in the finish or any of that stuff uh, before they go out to the client whose home's not gonna be as well lit. If you're in a nice uniformly lit shop that is bright enough to show off those imperfections, it's gonna help you create better projects before they go out the door. So first things first, we need to figure out the lighting that we've received from American Greenlight and then come up with a game plan on how we're going to put it onto the ceiling. What we've got here is a bunch of 144 watt, six strips, uh, lights here from American Green Lights. Uh, for the size of our shop, this is what came recommended. And they sent a little, a little chart on how to hang them. I think that's the old shop. They did our old shop, and our old shop was perfect. Yeah, there it is. This is old. Yeah. What we've got to do is we've got all of these housing units for the electronics, and these are super, super simple. They come with uh, the three wired 110 volt plugs. These all just plug into the lights. We have to use chains and eye hooks for this uh, because our ceilings are not consistent height-wise. We have 19 foot ceiling over here and it's 15 feet over here. What we're trying to do is get all of our lighting to be the same height. And I think their recommended height was like 14 feet. So what we've got are eye bolts. Those are way bigger than I thought I bought. And chain. This is called jack chain. We're gonna just be drilling a single hole We'll run a, a line across where we want them, drill a hole in the purlins, put these eye bolts in and then run the chain through them. The chain will then attach to the lights themselves and they'll all hang and they'll be in perfectly straight runs if we do this right. That's the goal at least. The Sam and I are, that's exactly where I wanted that. So first thing I wanna do is figure out where the first one's gonna sit. We'll get a height on it. There's eight of them all on the same run. We can cut all the chain to the same length and be a little bit more efficient there. Um, and then we'll work our way down to the next row. Okay, so now that I'm, I'm up on the picker, about 15 feet in the air, and that is the edge of the wall. What I'm gonna do is come out and I'm gonna take five foot mark. I'll mark it here, I'll run a hole through, and then I'll kinda like balance the light fixture and get us down where we want these lights to be. One, like I said, to be about, about 14 feet. Literally can't see anything. My hands literally just caked in dirt. Now that we have that, sweet. I'm sorry, people, it's so dark up here. This is the brightest I can get it. So we're gonna hook, lift that on. We need to now, I guess, get the overall height of how actually tall this is. 18 feet, seven inches. So we need to get four, be down four feet, three inches. The smartest thing I can think of is if I can get this down an inch and a half here. If I just do this, it's the most genteel of machines. <laughs> and now, look at this fixture. And you should be able to get pretty much the exact amount that you need to make all of this consistent, right? Okay. 
But see, that's what I'm worried about. See how it wants to uh, twist? Because it's on a chain, and the chain's not a wire. Right. Do we care about them being twisted for anything more than what? So I guess the other option is we just drill these straight up in, and then we know they're perfectly straight. Regardless of the situation, whatever the distance between you and a light is, if you double that distance, you have half as much light. If you half the distance, you have double the light. So basically, what you're saying is, me. Correct. We need to reevaluate. Even with two eyelets, it won't sit straight. So if you can see this light above me, this thing is swinging, and it may not show up on camera, but when there's what, 30 of them in the ceiling? The slightest breeze is gonna move them. It's because these things are super light. They don't have much weight to them. Pack a big punch, but definitely lightweight. So we've decided what we're gonna do is just fasten them straight to these purlins with self-tapping metal screws, and then that'll give us an easier way to hide the wire and all that fun stuff. It's gonna be a little bit more work, so, and we're gonna have to go grab some materials, but I think it's a better solution. And Sam thinks it's only gonna be, what, a half a stop, maybe? Close enough, and if it's really that big of a deal, We'll figure it out later. Um, so we need to go pick up some self-tappers and a self-tapping bit, or separate bit. Let's see. Uh, so while Sam's grabbing materials, I can make some lunch. These little induction cooktops are sweet. All right, new segment, cooking with John. We used to do the shop stuff, chef stuff, but I haven't watched it. It was science. So I got this little flat iron filet. It's pouring outside, so I don't want to drag the smoker out there. A little seasoning, no idea what this is. Dirt looks like that. Then, bang. I think she's ready to see her. Ooh, let's. All right, she's done. Got to find the Yeah. Moment of beat us. Oh, look who's back. What are you doing? I'm making lunch. You were, you were gone. Sorry, I took a while. <laughs> Well, looks like we gotta get back to work. Scrumptious. Now let's go put some lights in. Sam's corn fused. I don't even know where the hell is it. There he is. He just got back, snagged up a bunch of materials. So what we're gonna do now is go back up in the ceiling. He's gonna start unboxing these. We're gonna mark them in the center so we can get a center line and match everything across. And then we're just gonna start uh, bolting them up and then running them through and getting all the fasteners and stuff up. It's pretty much gonna be a montage of things. Yeah, let's rip. All right, friends. So I've got it marked off of the end of the wall here. I've got it marked for where I'm going to be putting what we've got on here is a center screw. So I'll get that center screw mounted first and then I'll adjust it this way and then we'll run this whole first row down. We'll come back and then wire everything in. And we only have one picker, so Sam and I can't really tag team much, but he's down there doing a great job unboxing stuff. We're gonna be as efficient as we can and hope to not screw anything up. Par for the course. It sucked, but it worked. Man, if it looks straight, I gotta put some headphones in. This sucks. Hey, throw me up a uh, single connector. Just so you know, these are the wrong ones. What do you mean? Uh, these are for. Romex, and they're too short. Damn it. Debatably the best or worst camera angle in history. So these just snap in. There's it in the crank jig down there. What do you think about this part? Oh. I stared right into that one. A little bit more light. I'm on to the second one. I just pulled a tape from there. We come down 11 feet, which will put us 13 feet on center, and that's what the diagram has. So, on to baluster number two. You should be easily be able to get this cable in, and then now on to the next. We're down to the last light in this row. Can you guys see this? This just massive moth hanging here. I'm gonna vacuum these suckers up, take this light down. Sorry for blinding you. Start wiring these suckers up. Update. We've got two left, which is awesome. 
And then we're gonna light up this row and I'm gonna go lay on the ground potentially for like 12 hours. Cause I am not built to be working above my head. So what I do, you bring both wires into it, that double connector. And I'll go ahead and tighten the connector. Now I can snip these down to a similar length. Go ahead and strip them. Wire nut them all together. I hate this. Now all that is wired up. Get it nice and tight back into the box. And now you got a panel. I just set it here. And these connectors, they just slide right in. And I grab a screw and I'll take the panel. I'll pull as much of the wiring as I can back into the box. A screw onto the head of my drill. Put one screw in. And what that does is it allows me to kind of twist this thing around to get all these wires in. One more. On to the next one. I'm ready. I'm just gonna plug this one in because it's right next to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring these back. But we should be able to have this light up here in like five minutes or so. Yay! Do you know what I realized is super hard about filming, installing lighting? It's really is that tight. there's no light to film. Let there be light! Yes! Oh my god. How much better is it? It's so bright. <laughs> we might have too many lights. Last battle! For this row. There's actually 25 more. Here we go. It is time to plug it, the sucker in. Here she is. You're up in the ceiling with me. Oh my goodness! This place is gonna be so bright. Miles. I don't think you understand how bright it's gonna be in here. Sam. I don't want to hear you're complaining about it's too bright, it's too dark, it's too American, okay, it's too just, freedom. Just, well, look at how, look at our corner. We can see that corner now. Hi, corner. Oh my goodness. It's like a different place. Like, did you know that there was this spray paint mark on the wall? Because I didn't. We've been here for months. So speaking of cleaner, I'm just going to drink some. Ah, oh. All right. See you guys some more. The next day. Well, it's the next morning uh, and John's got some meetings and stuff, so I'm left on my own. I've got the picker, got snacks. Let's uh, let's get to it. So the first step that I'm gonna do is take down the other lights. Now that we have a row of really bright lights, I can get the other ones out of the way and then it'll make it a lot easier to grip it and rip it. We have our measurements, we have everything laid out, everything's out of the boxes. We really didn't get started till like two o'clock yesterday. So it was really only like two, three hours and it was basically John doing it on his own. And we got a lot done. So I think I'm very hopeful that we'll get it done today. Let's jump into it. Gonna hold on to that. Okay, how do we want to do this? Yes, I could. Yeah, that works. All right, I've got three up so far. I'm kind of getting a system down. Working up like this is tough. I know John said it yesterday. Uh, but this thing, this picker, even though it's like a thousand years old, has really made this a lot easier. You know, I have my numbers, I have my measurements, I can measure across. I'm so glad we only have to do this once. We've got the main two rows set up. There's six more to do that's kind of over here by the hand tool cabinet. And then I think that's it. We might add one more down at the end. I'm taking lights away from what was already here and it keeps getting brighter. So I think we'll be good. These things have been awesome. They're pretty easy to set up. The two part thing uh, makes it easy to just hang the ballast and then we'll come back once we wire them all and hang the LED panels on them. And this thing should be like Clark Griswold's house before you know it. Holy shit, don't know like he's up there again. Hey kids, I was doing a little admin work. Sam took over, got all the lights mounted. Now we're gonna wire them in. For liability's sake, I'm gonna do that part. Then when our electrician gets here in a little bit, he can just finish. But this is actually, we got pretty lucky. The way they had the old lights, 
they were using plugs. So they had them all plugged in, which means we don't have to wire anything back to the box or run it cold. So we can keep lights on because you can just wire everything and then plug it in, which means we should be able to plug this run in in a short bit and then um, also be able to keep the place lit while we work, which I was concerned about. <laughs> Always keep it lit. Uh -huh. All right, I'm gonna try not to bang my truck. Unplug this one. Pour it down. Moment of truth. Hey, we're still alive. Still makes me happy every time. All right, two rows down or up. Of the six by the workbench, this is the last guy. Plugging her in. Woohoo! Chibra! <laughs> yes! Well, John and Gib got the rest of the wiring done last night. They stayed later than I did, got it all done. So the last thing we gotta do is just put the LED panels on and then plug the thing in and the shop lighting will be wrapped. Wow, is that brighter? Last light. Oh, I'm so excited to have these new lights. Shout out to American Green Lights. These things are so bright and so awesome. Now, all we gotta do is plug it in. John! Ah! It's so bright! What do you think? It's very bright up there. If not, so now that Sam feels a lot better because the light is perfect out here, last thing we need to do is upgrade our lighting in the office. If you guys remember from our shop tour, pretty sad in there. We plan on doing a little remodeling. We plan on doing a conference table for in there and stuff. So we want to improve the lighting situation for the same reasons we're improving out here. Plus these LEDs should save us a couple bucks compared to the fluorescent tubes. So American Green Lights makes these conversion kits. We're gonna start installing those suckers. All right, so what we've got are some balusters. We should probably read these. And these will retrofit into this thing. We won't bore you guys with like 90 of the light fixtures, but what we'll do is get one or two installed, give you the gist of it. Oh boy, all we need is a power screwdriver, wire cutters, and a socket, woo! Now listen, people, you're not comfortable with basic electrical stuff like this. Hire a professional. Trust me, it's not worth shocking yourself or burning your house down or burning your building down or something. Sam? Might be that. Hit that light switch. <laughs> Woo! Let that be light. With that, that's going to be a wrap on this one. We've got a bunch more of these to do, but we won't bore you with it. I want to send a huge shout out to American Green Lights for hooking it up for this video. If you're looking to upgrade your lighting, make sure you check them out. They are bar none the best we've ever worked with. I got a link down in the description. And if you want to see more ridiculous shop projects and all that's going on here at the Dream Shop, got a whole playlist for you right here.